Okay, we're going to be talking about mathematics on the task exam and how you can help yourself improve in math uh, quickly. So um, if you stick around, I'm going to um, emphasize a couple big concepts that are important for uh, those of you out there that are studying mathematics. So I'm um, assuming that you're familiar with the task exam if you're watching this video. The task exam is a high school equivalency exam that's given in uh, certain states. Um, it's very much like the GED. There are differences. Uh, there's another exam out there called the high set, but basically these exams are essentially pretty similar um, and they're going to be testing your ability to understand uh, high school level mathematics. At, and I would say that would encompass pretty much a super solid understanding of algebra maybe like Algebra 1 level, if you're familiar with uh, um, that course, and that's more applicable to uh, most students who take that in ninth grade at uh, most high schools. And then geometry, okay? So geometry is generally taken like at the 10th grade sophomore level. But what I've seen is those two courses, for sure, you need to know, you know a considerable amount of... Um, knowledge, skills, concepts in those two courses. And some, you know, I've actually even seen a little bit more mathematics on the task. And even if you didn't know the more advanced stuff, um, that's certainly the minority of things that are on the test. If you understand, if you had a real good foundation of the other stuff, you, you know, you can, you should be able to do um, pretty nicely on the exam. So I have here an example uh, problem. And if you want to try to, you know, pause the video and solve it, I'm only using this, um, um, problem here as an example of what I want to talk about how you can improve quickly in math okay so before I do the problem I'm going to tell you the kind of like the main concept of my um, my tip here okay in mathematics and this is just kind of human nature what we want to do is this if we want to improve quickly okay generally speaking we try to do more of something okay so for example here is a student, okay, and let's say they want to learn how to solve equations. So kind of logical thinking is, well, let me just do a bunch of problems. Let me just do a bunch, a bunch of problems, and let's say I do a thousand problems. If I do a thousand problems, I'll be a, I'll be a master. I'll be, you know, totally understand this, you know, and, and I'll have this down. This is not true, not true true not necessarily true okay so what's wrong with this kind of um, philosophy or this kind of thinking well if you're doing a thousand problems but if you're doing them incorrectly <laughs> you're better off not doing zero problems okay if you do a thousand problems incorrectly you're actually digging yourself a pretty big hole because you're instilling you're teaching yourself a lot of bad habits and it's, then it becomes very difficult to unwind these bad habits to just get back to a baseline and learn. Okay, so if you're just starting out and you, if you haven't studied much math, then th this is good for you, okay? Because um, a lot of students, they'll, do, they'll be doing things that they think are correct, mathematically speaking, but what they're doing is they're confusing themselves. And the more you do that, the more you're going to hurt yourself. And, and, and it's going to take you longer to learn certain math skills. We're all math skills, okay? So if you want to improve quickly in math, you don't want to do a ton of problems right off the bat, okay? So what do you want to do, right? Well, what you want to do is go nice and slow, okay? Slow, all right? Or you want to, let's say less is better, okay? Initially, all right? You want to go for quality, not quantity. You want to talk about, I'm talking about um, the quality of your understanding. Or you really truly understand everything that's going on in terms of the solution. And if you don't, then you have to stop and go figure out, you know, what's what you need to learn in order to understand. So it's much better to learn how to master one or two problems than try to do a, a, a thousand problems, okay? So how do you improve quickly in mathematics? Take each problem nice and slow and start developing good study habits and start learning the principles involved in that problem. Because if you can do one problem, then you can do many problems, okay? And then what you're doing here, when you're, when you're doing a lot of practice, what you're doing is 
increasing your efficiency. Okay, so when you first start off, if you if this particular problem right here, I'm gonna actually solve this problem here in a second. If this particular problem takes you, let's say, 20 minutes, all right, don't and but if you get it correct, don't stress out. Be like, well, it took me 20 minutes. No. The next time you do that problem, it's going to take you five minutes or 10 minutes. And then if you do more and more of them, you're going to become more effective, all right? So you want to get, you want to first understand and then through practice, okay, you're, become, you're going to become more efficient, i.e. you're going to be able to do problems quicker. So let's go ahead and put this into motion here. And if you don't know how to do this problem, don't worry about it. I'm going to solve it. Uh, um, we'll kind of go through it together. But this is what I want to do is kind of show you how your mind should be thinking when you look at a particular math problem. So this is what we call uh, an equation in algebra, a linear equation. It has one variable. And you need to like size it up and think, okay, how do I solve this? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that we have a distributive property situation going on right here. Okay. And by the way, if you're totally lost and if you're not even ready for this, I'm going to leave a link in the description uh, in this video, um, and I do this in all my videos, whether for high set, task, GED, et cetera, or any kind of courses that I help you out. I have courses on those, so if you want to take my uh, task course, you can check that out by just clicking the link in the description below. But let's get back to this particular problem. So let's, even if you don't know how to do it, just follow my logic, okay? So. Here, because I have these two parentheses, I have to do something called the distributive property. And that just means I take this number outside of the, uh, the parentheses. I'm going to multiply it by this number and this number. So 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times this negative 5 is negative 10. Okay. Now I can go ahead and write out the rest of the problem like so. So I just took one step. I'm not rushing a problem. I'm just doing this. And... That's done. That's the first thing I need to do when I'm kind of working this problem. Now, the second thing I need to do is to kind of clean up the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And what I mean by that is we need to kind of collect like terms and numbers. So when I'm looking at the left-hand side, I only see one number, but I do see two algebra terms here that terms that I can combine. Okay, so a 2x and a negative 7x, if I add these up, I'm going to get a negative 5x. Now, let's suppose you wrote down 5x. All right, that would be a good indication that you're, you need to work on your positive and negative number understanding. Okay, So as you're learning math, you want to have um, somebody demonstrate problems to you so you can kind of like understand what's going on and then try to emulate and you know kind of copy that the, the, those solutions. That's why it's really important to have a math teacher, some sort of study system. Of course, I think mine's very effective, but there's others out there. I would um, suggest like a video-based system, or if you're going to be using some sort of text, something that really shows each, you know, the, the problem, the solution broken down step by step, because it's not enough just to give you the answer because you're like, well, how did it, how did you get the answer? Right. You know, you want to see the steps to do that because that's where, truly where you're going to gain your understanding. OK, so anyways, we have 2x and negative 7x and that's going to be negative 5x. But then we have this minus 10. I'm going to write that here. And now I have 9 minus x. So at this point of the problem, what we want to do when we're solving equations is get all our variables, all our x's or y's or whatever you're dealing with on the left-hand side and all of our numbers to the right-hand side. So we have to be able to do this following uh, certain steps. So let's go ahead and move the numbers over uh, first. So if I have a negative 10 on the left, but I want to get it over to the right, all I have to do is just add a negative 10, a positive 10 to this negative 10, because what's negative 10 plus positive 10? It's zero, right? So it's kind of like making this, this number disappear but the, on the left-hand side. But remember, in equations, here's the deal. It's just very much like a teeter-totter, a scale. If I'm going to add a 10 over here, what happens to the scale? Well, it tips over, right? So equations, you have to always keep the left and right-hand uh, side of the equation in balance. That's why they're equal to one another. Just think of it as weight, if you will, like you know weights at the gym or something. So... If I add a positive 10 over here, it's going to tip it down. So to put it back in balance, I have to add a positive 10 over here. So whatever you do on one side of an equation, you have to do it to the other. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to add a positive 10 here. And effectively, this moves the number over to the other side of the equation. And I can move a number from the right-hand side to the left-hand side or left to the right, just following these kind of basic um, ideas. So now I'm going to add down. All right, it's going to add down. So now I'm going to have negative 5x, negative 10 plus 10 is 0, right? goes away. This equal sign, and then 9 plus 10 is 19 minus x. So that's where we're at in this equation. So let's kind of write it a little bit neater. Okay. So now we have all the numbers over to the right-hand side. I just need to get the variables over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to use the same idea here. I have a negative x, but I need to move it over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to add an x. And these are 1x's. Right here, when you see an x in algebra, you don't see a number in front of it. There's actually a 1. Okay. But so because I added an x to the right hand side, I need to add an x. Whoops. Add an x to the left hand side. Now, by the way, I'm using a nice like tablet PC here. And you can see I'm in a little error. Okay, I'm going nice and slow. I'm controlling the problem. I'm double checking my work. But notice that I kind of raced, you know, here. It was easy for me to do it. Now, this is why I also suggest you use pencil, okay? Don't use pen because if you do, you're going to have to scribble, your, scribble that out and you're going to be very, you know, uh, you're not going to be neat. And let me just emphasize that real quick in this problem, okay? You see how I can see everything? I can read what's going on. Neatness is huge, okay? I really stress that in my courses, being neat and organized, but it's not enough for someone to tell you to be neat and organized. It's really you want to emulate how a teacher, you know, how somebody really knows how to do math, how they're breaking down the steps, okay? So you can kind of see everything what I'm doing step by step here. All right, let's finish this up. So I have a negative 5x plus a positive 1x. Hopefully you're good with your positive and negative numbers. That's going to give me a negative 4x. And then I still have this 19, right? I'm adding down in columns here, okay? So negative, I'm sorry, positive 19 plus 0 is just 19, and then negative x plus x is 0 goes away. So right now I'm left with this basic equation, negative 4x equals 19, and to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 4. All right, so my answer is x equals negative 19 over 4. And in algebra, most teachers... Um, are not going to require you to, to turn this into a decimal. I would not turn this into a decimal, but if you have a fraction, you want to make sure that it's fully simplified, you know, reduced. In other words, if you had a fraction like 100 over 30, you wouldn't want to reduce that down to 10 thirds, okay? You wouldn't leave your answer like that. But it's not necessary to divide um, uh, 3 into 10, okay? You certainly don't want to waste any time on the task trying to, you know, do that by hand or whatnot. Just Get your answer and then go ahead and, you know, um, make your selection or do your uh, fill-in, okay? So, you know, this problem took us some time to do. Now, for me, I could do this problem very, very quickly and, you know, because I have the habits of, you know, I, obviously I know what I'm doing, but it's also even if, you know, I know what I'm doing, I know how to work this problem and not... Um, and uh, not make an, you know, really reduce my chances of making an error, Okay, because it doesn't make a difference. You can have a PhD in math. Anybody can make a human error. Okay, math teachers are famous for making errors. There's a lot of uh, top math books in school districts and colleges that have errors in them. That's actually pretty common. Probably didn't know that, but there's um, the textbooks that you use at school. They probably have at least a few errors, if not more than that. Okay, so they, so it's just one of these things that happen. What I do and what you need to learn how to do when you're going nice and slow is audit yourself. You're double-checking yourself, okay? And once you understand the steps and you're going nice and slow and you fully, completely understand the process, guess what? The next time you do this problem, you're going to go faster. And then you're going to go faster and faster. So the thing about it, if you want to improve in math quickly, you have to approach each problem in a, in a nice, controlled, slow manner and learn it. Study master that one problem. And obviously you want to start with the more basic problems and build yourself up. So that's why it's really important to make sure you're, you're studying from a good curriculum or, or you're in a good program, um, a class, whatever, you know, some, something that's 
that you're able to engage in and build your math skills up. But really, math skills, you can really um, build your skills up pretty quickly if you follow an intelligent approach to learn math. Okay, And obviously, I'm assuming that you're already committed to passing the task. Well, what you know, um, if you're thinking that, well, I'm just going to try to do a bunch of problems real quick. Well, you know, you're better off not even doing any problems because you're you're just going to confuse yourself. But let me go ahead and just wrap up this video. Um, again, uh, you know, if you're looking for, you know, a really good math course for the task, uh, you can check out my, uh, the link in the description below uh, for my task accelerator uh, program. But you know, uh, if you just found me on YouTube, please consider subscribing. I do a ton of videos out there just to try to help you out. Make sure you hit that bell notification when you do so. And if you enjoyed the video, hey, maybe give it a thumbs up and leave uh, feedback. Uh, I do try to, I get a lot of comments on videos, uh, which I'm very grateful for. So um, it gives me ideas. I can't respond to all the comments, but I do read as many comments as, as I can so I can get um, ideas on, on how I can better help you. But, uh, you know, if you are taking a task, I, I do um, a lot of different videos, you know, on math, study tips, motivation, etc. because really passing an exam like the task, um, you know, it's not, you know, it, you're not going to be studying in a vacuum. You know, you're, you're, in other words, you have a lot of things going on in your life. You're, you're, you're maybe you're working a job, you have various pressures. So it's not just about learning math, it's about organizing your time, studying in an effective way. Um, all these other things that you don't necessarily, you know, maybe learn in a book. And these are the kind of things that I'm gonna try to, uh, you know, help you out with through these videos. I already have a lot of stuff out there, but you know, I'm always trying to come up with, um, you know, things that are important that, would give you an edge so you can pass, you know, uh, these exams, you know, quicker, be more successful in what you're trying to do. But anyways, I do appreciate your time. I hope this helped you out. And with that being said, have a great day.